Hello guys, today I want to talk about try catch with exceptions in Laravel or in PHP in general. And one thing that people often forget to catch or forget to process one of the cases. It's not only about exceptions. Let me show you. So typical way how I see people use try catch. So try some kind of operation or a set of operations and then they catch the specific exception like query exception or the general exception, like if anything could go wrong. So for example, if I want to add a thread and a message and I made a typo of field name, for example, then here's my form to add that message. It's a real demo project and it's actually mentioned in the previous video of Laravel Messenger and I use fake filler Chrome extension to fill it in. I submit and what do I get? In this case, for a visual demo, I just DD the actual error. So query exception and here we go, query exception field subject doesn't have a default value because instead of subject, I'm trying to fill in subject C, which doesn't exist. And the same thing would work if I catch general exception like this. So let's comment that out and we catch just the general exception and I try to do it again. And the same thing, just general exception, but it will also be caught. So you can choose whether to catch a specific exception of Eloquent or Laravel or catch the general PHP exception. And by the way, use the backslash here because otherwise, if for example, you'd go exception, see how many exceptions are there, exception classes all over, some packages and internal stuff. So general, if I do just enter in PHP storm, it automatically adds the slash. So be careful with doing this because you never know what actually exception that is. Okay, so that's a typical way how to use try catch. And another example I often mention is Stripe official documentation payment provider and the PHP documentation for handling the errors has a lot of try catches. So try and catch a lot of different exception. And that may be really useful for actually end user to have the specific message in case of card exception that something is wrong with their payment card, rate limit, authentication, API connection or something like that. And only at the end, there's a general exception like something else happened. But that's not all. Again, I'm repeating the same thought. What if you have not an exception, but a PHP error? And that is not the same. Let me show you. What if some class is actually dynamically built? So you're not using directly the model, but for example, class equals app models thread, something like this and then you add class here, which is fine. It's perfectly fine for Laravel and PHP to have dynamic class names. It's a valid syntax. And maybe you want to have dynamic classes to make it more flexible, whether it's thread or message or something like that. But what if you mistyped the class name and that class doesn't actually exist? So in this case, it's not models thread. In fact, it comes from the package of Laravel Messenger and this is invalid class. Would you catch the exception here? So basically you do try catch and the exception should be caught, right? Let's try it out. We fill in the form with fake filler, we submit and we have an error. So that exception isn't actually caught because it's not an exception. It's a PHP error class. Another example is from my course about solid principles in Laravel. If you want to have dynamically set class name, which would implement the same interface, here's an example. So class name is dynamic. And if that doesn't exist, you would actually have a PHP error. And by the way, if you're interested, you can purchase full course solid code in Laravel. It is around two hours long with solid principles discussed in practice. The link will be in the description below. Now back to our own example here. What do we need to do to catch the error? We need to do another catch, but this time not catch the exception, but catch error. And PHP Storm suggests me the class and it's also backslash error because it's a system class of PHP. And let's change that general error and let's try it out. Again, we refresh the same page, we continue. And now the error is called general error model not found. So now the question becomes, should we catch an error every time? Not really. There are only specific kinds of errors of PHP errors, and you would need to think when it is possible to catch those errors. Let's go to PHP documentation. If we get to the official documentation of error class in PHP, and by the way, it's only from PHP 7, but I do hope that you don't use earlier version of PHP. And the main thing here is the sidebar here. What are the exceptions? And there are exceptions like I've shown before, but then there are errors, the classes, the subclasses of error class, 
and these are the errors that you should look out for. For example, in our case, it was, I think it was parse error, basically anything with parsing. So in that case, the class name wasn't parsed correctly. Also, there could be compile error that something is not compiled properly. Or, for example, division by zero error. If you have any division by zero, for example, if you do reporting and then divide by days, and that days amount may be zero in some case, that should be a lookout for. Also, stuff like argument count error, when there's a mismatch of amount of arguments for the function. So you can check those out. I will link that in the description below of all the possible errors. So if you want to catch all of them, you just do catch error. But if you want to have specific, like with exceptions, you can specify some of them directly. So that's it for this video. A pretty rare case, I would say. So shoot in the comments, have you encountered in your career the PHP error and not exception? And how did you handle the situation? Did you catch the error or did you catch a specific error? Tell your stories in the comments. That's it for now. Subscribe to the channel to get the daily videos and see you guys in other videos.